There we go. Bingo. Thought I clicked that. All right, I think we're rocking and rolling now. Yes. Uh, we have a special edition of Weather Where You Are today uh, because of the eclipse. It is a big day. Uh, first alert meteorologist Courtney Giacobazzi, Ella Dorsey, both here to uh, let you know what to expect. Um, Ella, this is really, really cool. We haven't had an eclipse. I mean, of course, in 2017, you and yep. I both were here in Georgia, mm -hmm. um, and we had totality, I believe, just about. In the northeast corner of the state had totality. Right. I was in Athens where it was 99% yeah. totality, and I believe Atlanta was 97%. Right. So very close. Yeah. Um, today will be <laughs> close, but not quite as dim. It shouldn't be quite as dim as... Yeah, I mean, back in the last one, enough of the sun was covered to where it became kind of like dusk. Right. Or like, you know, you right, like right before almost. the sun right. comes up. Mm -hmm. We're not going to see that kind of right. extreme change in the light. But if you have the glasses and you're looking at the sun, you certainly will see the eclipse. See, right, absolutely. And not another one for another 20 years, 2044. Crazy. And scientists were saying that they think that it's only going to cover like Montana and the Dakotas. So it won't really... You're going to have to travel to a very niche location for the next one. So uh, we're going to talk about um, that. Well, not necessarily the eclipse in 20 years, but we're going to talk about what to expect here at home um, for everyone who is trying to view it. Because obviously, I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of kids are out of, can you believe the kids are out of school for this? Does, is that a little wild too? But anyway. Right. All right. So let's talk about what a solar eclipse is because, of course, we have lunar eclipses, we have solar eclipses, so it's important to... Uh, let people know exactly what is happening when it comes to an eclipse. So essentially, you have the uh, moon that is going to go between the Earth and the sun, and the sun is going to essentially beam its beautiful bright rays over onto the moon, and then the moon is going to cast a shadow. And so that shadow is what you're seeing kind of trek across uh, the United States. That's when it's eclipsed. So that's what we're seeing. And then, of course, when you're looking at it with your eclipse glasses, you're going to see the moon physically go between the sun. So, uh, yeah, that's that's how that works. You know, if you actually really think about it, Courtney, it's wild that eclipses don't happen more often. Right? I was kind of wondering that, too. Like, why? Because the moon's so... always there and the sun's always there. Right. Yeah. At it's least total very, ones. very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd be interested to, like, look into that, why that happens. Right. I mean, I know we have, like, minor ones happen Quite often. But you would think that just with how much we're all rotating, right? Everyone's we'd get more all of the time. them, right? right. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, really cool. So that's how that works. Um, and obviously, the sun will go directly between us and, or excuse me, the sun, the moon. The moon. Hello, thank you. The moon will go directly between the sun and earth later today. And so the path of totality, of course, uh, not going to move over us, but will be close. The path of totality is going to move through Texas, which we're going to talk about, Ella. They're expecting severe weather today. Austin, Dallas in the path of totality, yeah. San Antonio, I believe. Um, also, just other really big cities like Indianapolis in there. Um, some parts of Vermont in the northeast, mm -hmm. parts of Ohio as well. Uh, Memphis is almost in it, so a, a large portion of the United States in it. Here in Georgia, we're going to see between 80 and 85 percent right. totality. Right, and so, again, don't think it's necessarily going to get super dim and dusk-like, but, uh, I mean, when you wear the eclipse glasses, I think it's going to look pretty cool, and that is something to point out. Wear your eclipse glasses, folks, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, eye damage is a real thing. If you stare at the sun, you're going to burn your retinas. So let's not do that, okay? Uh, we talked actually this weekend on the weekend show, we talked to an eye doctor, and she was saying that that's, like, permanent. Can't fix that. So let's not stare at the sun. It's like if you, you know when you look at something too bright and then you have that little, like, squiggly in yes, your eye? Yes, right. That just sits there? Right. You don't want that permanently. Right. So... Let's not stare at the sun without the eclipse glasses, y'all, or make the little pinhole projector or whatever they call it. Totally. Uh, that's a good idea. And, I mean, we have coverage here on Atlanta News First Plus also yeah. if you want to watch it there. And you can actually see the, the real, real yeah, deal. Yeah, we're going to be bringing, like, really cool live shots, yeah. too, from all over. From so the path of great. totality mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So let's talk about the timing because I'm sure a lot of you want to know when this is going <laughs> to happen. So the partial eclipse will begin around 145. Um, the max eclipse is going to happen around 304, so around 3 o'clock. And, again, it's going to be about, like, 82% eclipse. So not fully, but fairly close. Um, and then the partial eclipse is going to end at 421. But a lot of people want to know, Ella, we've been watching kind of carefully this morning at mm -hmm. how the cloud cover is looking. Yep. And it's not half bad, which no. is good so far. Totally. If when, when we were in the total solar eclipse, like the actual total solar eclipse only lasts for like three or four minutes. Right. 
if that were to going to be a, a, a factor today, then cloud cover would be really important because right when it's at its max, like right. what, if one cloud were to pass over, then you're going to miss it. But because right. we're not going to see totality, it shouldn't be that big of a deal no matter what you're going to see it. And we don't expect mostly cloudy skies. It's actually going to be right. partly cloudy through the afternoon. The clouds increase right around the time that the eclipse ends, around right. 5 or 6. Which is good. Now, certain people, though, which we'll show you in just a minute, um, they are going to experience quite a bit of cloud cover. And we're talking about our friends up in the mountains um, who will, unfortunately, not get the best view. But that's okay. I mean, you just get, hop in your car and drive an hour or so south, and you'll be good to go. Um, mm -hmm. But we talked about this. So... Dallas, Austin, Houston. I mean, Houston's not in the path of totality, totality I don't believe. But, no, um, but regardless, uh, severe weather is expected. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is an evening event for them. So I don't think that it's going to be actively storming when the eclipse happens for right. them. But there's a lot of people that traveled out yeah. to those areas. Right. Um, like, I got a, a DM on Instagram from a woman who watches us, and she said that she and her husband and their whole family um, were going out to Austin. Mm-hmm. For she's for their thirty seventh wedding anniversary, she oh my said their gosh. whole family was going out there, and she was asking me about cloud cover and everything. And I told her it looks like it's going to be okay, but like something that they get out there that we don't experience here is really large hail, right? And it looks like those storms this evening could have like baseball I was sized just to say hail. Baseball. And if you're not from like that area, like. In Georgia, we get severe storms, but we don't have hail like that. Right. That's what they're going to get. That's that main threat with the storm system. I'm going to put it back mm -hmm. over. That's moving through tonight. So that is a kind of a risk for people that are traveling in that yeah. area. Definitely For large careful. hail tonight. And this is a sa same storm system that will bring us a chance of severe weather later on in the week. Right. I mean, you have to think people traveling, flying, like maybe their flights leave tonight or something like that. That's going to cause travel issues. Mm -hmm. Megan, so Megan Packer, the anchor with me on the weekend, um, her brother went out there from Philly, and then they met people from England, literally England, who came to the United States to uh, to see the eclipse. And now here we are looking at the potential for storms. Could you imagine, like, you literally crossed the whole sea, and here you are. Um, not seeing it? Not seeing That's it. That's why you don't ever depend on, like, the thought of having a wedding outside gives me the heebie-jeebies. Oh, please. Um, you know, anything that has to do with weather when you make it huge plans around it. Right. It's just, you're just asking for trouble. No kidding. I mean, you yeah. saw me when I was planning my wedding. Like, I looked as far out as that GFS could go. Like, yep. two weeks. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's going to rain on my wedding day. Like, Ellis at Courtney Collins. And it actually looks decent. Day. I mean, like, up in, in in Tennessee, those poor folks, which are, get, they're getting a higher percent of the sky cover, or right. the sun covered. They're not going to see anything because it's raining up there. Yeah. You know? We're right. not going to see any rain today, but let's get back to that. Right. You can see the radar showing showers up to the north. That's the reason for more cloud cover in the North Georgia mountains today. Right. Is that rain that's there and, yeah, ultimately resulting in a cloudier sky for the mountains. So here's a look at just kind of like a snapshot of 3 o'clock because that's really when the big ordeal happens. Uh, you know, when it's partially eclipsed, like, you can see it, obviously, but what you're, what you're waiting for is max totality for us or um, max eclipse for us because we're not going to see totality, which is around 3 o'clock. So, uh, again, 80 to 85% totality. And look at Atlanta. Atlanta really doesn't look half bad around 3 o'clock. Right. Um, you know, like you said, if one cloud passes by, which you definitely can't rule out, uh, then you kind of miss it. But, um, you But know, because it's not going to be full, you're not going to get that full, like – dim right yeah that like crazy impact effect for like that those few minutes it's just you're just basically gonna see like it, it, the sun is so strong guys that even even with the sun covered 85 percent like it's right. still gonna be so bright outside so Correct. yes i just don't want y'all to get your hopes up like we're gonna see some cr like crazy the sky turns dark <laughs> that's not gonna happen no right but you can like it'll look like you know it got a bite taken out of it when the moon goes by totally. which is pretty cool so um but yeah so Fewer clouds further south you go. So, again, if you live up in LJ, you live in Blue Ridge, anywhere up in the mountains, just drive, like, an hour and a half, two hours south. Come visit us in Metro, and uh, you'll get a better view of it. I mean, a lot of kids are out of school today, uh, so that's going to, you know, be something that you can do, I guess. Why not just pack them mm -hmm. up in the car and, uh, and go? Uh, so here's a look kind of at the forecast as a whole with some numbers. Ella, it's going to be a great day today temperature-wise. Oh, my God, it's be beautiful. It's going to feel amazing outside. Our high yesterday – was 72 degrees. Mm -hmm. Our high today is 78. So noticeably warmer through the right. afternoon. This is the time of year. I mean, you know, Courtney, I go hard Ugh, for April. We love okay. April. Because, uh, you know, you don't have the humidity yet. Mm -hmm. 
So it's warm, but it's not muggy. Right, sticky and uh, gross. The pollen count um, is still high, but it's not extreme like it was last week. You still need to be taking your, your allergy medicine, but we're not seeing those extreme levels. Um, it's just going to be a really, really beautiful day. Yeah, right. I mean, it, better than raining. You know what I mean? Like, we can't temperatures or I mean, even like cold. better than this weekend where right. it was kind of cold in the Chilly. mornings yeah yeah so this will be a really really <laughs> nice day to see it again a temperatures three o'clock that's like just about heat of the day yep. um mid 70s so really really nice um for anyone who wants to go check that out now of course we talked about this it's important that you follow the right instructions when it comes to safety. Yep. Okay, y'all. Uh, we said don't look directly at the sun. That's a given. Okay. Now, it's a little tougher when you have kids because I feel like kids want to do what they want to do. But, you know, do your best. Um, so sunglasses, those aren't going to work. The ones that you bought at Walmart, the ones that you bought from Ray-Ban, whatever, you know, I don't care how expensive the sunglasses were. They're not going to work. So don't use them. That's not it. Um, and then, of course, they have to have a certain number. So this was something that I learned, Ella, when we were um, – doing some stories on it this weekend is that they have to have a certain ISO number. Hmm. I don't know what ISO stands for, so don't ask, but um, there's a number next to it. And I believe it's like one, three, two something. But anyway, if it doesn't have that ISO certification, then they're not Eclipse approved. So like a lot of people are obviously buying them off of Amazon. I know a handful of people buying them off Amazon, not saying they're all faulty or anything like that, but you just need to make sure when you get them that they have that certification on it. So then you don't, Hurt ruin your, your eyes. Hurt your eyes, Correct. right. Yeah, so just something to note. Well, that but, so okay, so but for people that didn't get the glasses in time, right? So right. there's probably some people watching right now that are like, okay, well, crap. I didn't get the glasses. Right. I don't have the glasses, so what do I do? You were telling us this morning that you can make your own, right. like, makeshift. It's called a pinhole projector. Yeah, how, yeah. how does that work? So essentially you take, like, a piece of cardboard or something like that, and you literally poke a hole into it, and what you'll Just do... Just a teeny little hole? Like, how big is the hole? They didn't say, specifically, but I feel like if you made it, like, almost, like, penny-sized, like, that probably works, or, like, dime-sized. Probably um, even a little smaller than that, I would think. Maybe. Yeah, you'd have to look up on that one. All I know is you have to poke a hole in a piece of cardboard. They didn't specify how big the hole is supposed to be, so I don't know. Google that, but how that works is, is you stand with your back facing the sun and you put the piece of cardboard in front of you and as everything like moves over and the sun starts to become eclipsed, it shows, it like reflects in that pinhole projector. Oh. So don't like stand there and like look at the sun with it. Like that's not how that works at all. That's actually really dangerous because um, that little piece of cardboard is not going to block the that's sun. That's what I thought we would yeah. do. No, so, okay, so don't do that. It must be a little <laughs> hole if you get to look right at the sun through it. Right. No, 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 no. And that's why I was saying like maybe like dime-sized, you know, like I don't think that's, because people use like colanders and stuff too. Like anything with a hole in it will, I don't know if you've ever seen, I think there's actually, Actually, some video um, that we have that will show. Um, maybe it's this one. Let's see. Will it go? Oh, actually, hold on. Maybe, maybe not. I thought that's how that was. Gonna, I thought it was going to play for you guys. I guess not. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Well, I tried. Um, <laughs> but either way, there was. There's some. There was. Um, video of someone with a colander and it like projected every hole that the colander had in it it projected the eclipse on the ground so like it was just really neat um if you use a colander instead but that's okay hmm. i don't know i don't know where how why the video wasn't playing but that's okay well yeah. you know whatever it's all right um <laughs> either way um so yeah so if you use like a strainer or colander or whatever, any kind of kitchen equipment that has a hole in it too. I mean, even like your spoon, you know, like a, like, you know, the little spoons that you have the holes in the bottom of them. If you put that in front of you, you can use that as a pinhole projector. And as the eclipse happens, it'll project, like it'll reflect onto the ground. So you'll see what you would be looking at at glasses on the ground, essentially. So that's how you can do that. If you don't have glasses, it's not a total loss. And like we were mentioning Atlanta News First Plus will have coverage starting at 2 o'clock this right, afternoon. Right, And then you can just see totality, which is super cool. Yeah, because so, we're going to have, like, live shots from all over totally. the country on all of our platforms. Yeah. I mean, it's going to – that's what I'm going to be doing. Me too. I, you know, because honestly, guys, I hate to break it to you, but, like, it's not going to be that 
spectacular here. Yeah. But across Other? the country, it's going to be amazing, and right. we're going to bring you live feed from, you know, as it goes over Austin, as it goes over Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. um, Indianapolis opened their um, racetrack. Yeah, the five, where they do the 500. Yeah, which yeah. is really cool because back in 2017, um, when the eclipse came through here at court, I was in Athens and Sanford Stadium opened up the stadium. Mm -hmm. So it was full of students. Cool. Right? And, um, and it got again, kind of like a night game. Right, I was just going to say. Like the, the sun set dimmed. and then the lights yeah. came on and they like played this music cool. for a totality. It was really, really cool. Fun. And it was really fun to be a part of. For for the people in Indianapolis, they're going to get that same experience. Yeah, today. that's going to be a really fun experience. <laughs> totally. um, and yeah, again, okay, so I just learned starting at 1230. It was two yesterday. We extended it for you guys at 1230. Okay. That's when our coverage will start uh, for you guys for the eclipse. Um, so, again, the pinhole thing, that's a that's a good option um, if you want to watch the eclipse but you didn't get glasses. Um, now, okay, so, Ella, you were saying that uh, you were at Sanford Stadium. So when I was experiencing the eclipse, um, I was in good old Macon, Georgia, and um, I actually got to go to, we had a museum of arts and sciences down there, mm -hmm. and so there were a bunch of kids, and like, it was just so cool to, because like, kids think everything is like just 20 times cooler than right. it is half the time. Um, and so like they just get so jazzed about that kind of stuff. Um, and so I was at a little science and arts museum and they were doing an eclipse viewing party and stuff and had cute little crafts for the kids and stuff. But they, when I tell you that was one of my favorite stories I ever did because the kids were just so excited. amped up about it. I mean, they were so excited. Um, and like when it happened, they were all like, ah, with their cute little voices. Um, anyway, so that was my experience of the eclipse and it was great. And then I also will never forget doing stories for like weeks and weeks and weeks after. Yes. Like anything I could have done for the eclipse, I was eclipsed out by the yeah. end of it. Oh yeah. Um, but yes, uh, a really fun time. And again, there's not another for another 20 years that's going to impact the United States. At right. least you'd have to be the one traveling overseas. There's one in Europe in two years and then the next one's like 20 years from now. So hmm. it's just something really rare that we've gotten twice now here yeah. in the last seven years right um so so yeah so it's just it's very interesting and the weather is going to cooperate however tonight we're going to see rain move in and right. that's the start of a much wetter period for us okay? right absolutely yeah we um we'll have more on your forecast obviously at noon first alert weather app yep. has your forecast um but i do want to just quickly show people in case they're just tuning in um and wondering about you know viewing and everything yep uh, kind of covered it. There's rain to our north right now. This is um, a snapshot of 3 p.m. today when yeah. when we will be at max um, eclipse here in Georgia, which will be between 80 85 percent. The white is cloudier skies. So mm -hmm. you can see from Gainesville, Hall County, Lake Lanier, up into the foothills of the mountains, um, certainly the mountainous areas. And then also West Georgia has a threat for some cloud cover today. There is going to be rain moving through Tennessee. Mm -hmm. That's the reason for the additional clouds. From Atlanta down to the south, especially south of I-20, especially south and east of the city, so down towards Lake Oconee, Athens, um, Gwinnett County, DeKalb County, you're going to be uh, honestly really good to go. So yeah. only partly cloudy skies, again, uh, for totality. Right. So anyone looking to go check it out, looking good to go um, for the most part today, unless you are in the mountains. And yeah. again, we're going to have coverage all over the country on ANF Plus where mm -hmm. you're watching right now yep. starting in two short hours so at 1230 so you can watch Jen for the noon show today to mm -hmm. get your forecast um, three first alert weather days Tuesday yeah. Wednesday Thursday because we're going to enter into a stormy pattern so you want to check in and then tune back into uh, ANF Plus because we're going to have like really great coverage where right. you're going to be able to see totality from all over the country absolutely so and as you mentioned forecast really important this week um, beyond today with rain storms maybe severe weather and all those details while we're not covering that right now all those details are in the first alert weather app and of course Jen will have that at noon so yep. all good stuff all right, everyone. Um, well, we really appreciate you uh, spending time with us today yes. and learning a little bit about the eclipse and what to expect here in North Georgia. Enjoy it. Uh, watch it how you can and just be sure that you're doing the right thing with the glasses or the pinhole projector so you keep your eyes safe. Um, and we will catch you guys here uh, later. We're, you always do weather where you are at 1130. Every Monday through Friday, yeah. I do weather where you are. Um, and we get kind of nitty gritty, guys. I don't mm -hmm. just give a forecast. Like, I'll dig into, like, 
what kind of models I look at and some like nerdy stuff like skew tees and the Matt and Julian oscillation. So if you like love weather and you want to <laughs> learn more about it, weather where you are is a great tool to kind of dig in further with me a little bit more into like the intricacies of the forecast. Right. Really, really cool. So, yeah. all right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Enjoy your day. Enjoy uh, viewing the eclipse and we'll catch you here later.